Hello and welcome to Bottle Ship with our friends the Jifflings. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. And you can email us at thegifflings at gmail.com. And stay tuned to the end of the show when the Jifflings will read out some of your reviews. And now it's time for today's episode, The Hedgehog's Kite. In your world, things are important. But what about the things that aren't important anymore? Well, sometimes those things end up here, in the magical land of Dilstonia, where little creatures called the Jifflings live on their little Jiffling ship. They find these things that we throw away and fish them out of their sea so they can recycle them and put them to good use once again. And here they are now, ready to work. Eccentric young pumpkin. Ooh, I'm ever so excited. The hedge, who is a very lazy jiffling. Like, hey man, is it time for bed yet? Miss Katie, who loves fixing things and dressy up. Sometimes I like both together. Albert, the ship's gardener. Hop bay, who's been into me cabbage patch like? And Friedeline, a very sensible jiffling who looks after everybody on the ship. Yeah, that is correct. Oh. Today on the ship, the jifflings have had a very exciting time. <laughs> because they've been whale watching. They've taken a delicious picnic to the side of the ship and watched as a family of blue whales swam past. Hey. Well, Jifflins, did you know that blue whales can weigh nearly 200 tonnes? How much does a Jiffling weigh? Well, Pumpkin, Jifflings a weighed in beans? Aye, and each of us little jiffs weighs about twelve and a half beans. Or thirteen beans, if it is the hedge after dinner. <laughs> like, hey man, did someone say dinner? Well, yes, hedge, but you've already eaten your delicious picnic. Your tummy can't still be rumbling. <sighs> As the whale family swam off into the distance, they sprayed water out of their blowholes to say goodnight to the Jifflings. And as the Jiffs waved back, they saw the sun was setting. Come, the sun is telling us that it must be time for snoozy bed sleeps. Can the whales come for a sleepover, Fleederline? We could have lots of fun. Oh, yes, please. We could build a special bedtime fort and all snuggle up inside it together. Nine pumpkin. The great big veil would not fit in the little Jifflings snuggle fort. So the Jifflings waved goodnight to the whales and turned away, ready for bed. But one Jiffling was hanging back. Can't we stay up just a bit longer? I'm not even a biscuity crumb of a tired Jiff yet. But it's like totally bedtime, Miss Katie. And at bedtime, we like go to bed. Oh no, it looks like the head has fallen asleep already, right there on the deck. It really must be time for bed. Not for me. Come on, Jess. Let's grab our homemade skateboards and go zooming up and down the ship. Then, before anyone could stop her, Miss Katie jumped on her special bedtime skateboard and went whizzing off across the deck. Woo! Woohoo! Look, Jiffs! Watch me do this super awkward flippy down trick. But as she came speeding towards the other Jiffs, Miss Katie's eyes started to close and she began drifting off, right there on her skateboard. Way! Oh, hey. no! <laughs> Sorry, Jiffs. Is everybody OK? Oh. Maybe I'm a bit more tired than I realised. Yeah, yeah. We are all OK, Miss Katie. But we must all get the proper rest at bedtime. I. Otherwise, you'll be so tired in the morning that you'll miss out 
on all the tomorrow adventures. Hark, Jiffs, what's that sound? It must be a late night object which was lost or thrown away on Earth and now has ended up in your net. Even sleepy Jiffs will need to help heave it on deck. The object landed on deck with an itsy bitsy whipsy. It was diamond shaped and colourful with a long string attached. Hedge guessed at what it could be first. I think that looks like a... Oh, poor Hedge. He really is sleepy. But then Friedeline stepped forwards, for she knew what the object was. And luckily, there was just enough time for her to scarp her up onto the story seat and tell her tale. This is the Hedgehog's Kite. And my old pottery teacher, Carlos Clay, told me all about it. Once, in a tiny little woodland, in a place called the Yorkshire Dales, there lived a family of hedgehogs who liked to roam around having fun all throughout the summer. There was Daddy Hedgehog and Mummy Hedgehog. Then there was the children, Harry Hedgehog, Hortensia Hedgehog, and finally, the smallest hedgehog of all, Herbie the Hedgehog. Ah, woohoo! Oh, I love being a hedgehog. In fact, I'm going to hedgehog all day long. Oh! Now, Herbie was only born in the springtime, oh. and because he was the youngest hedgehog, he often got away with his extra silliness. Oh. He would jump in the pond and splash everyone and run around flying his favourite hedgehog's kite, zooming it high in the sky and getting in everyone's way. But his family did not mind because they loved him so much. Oh. Well, after his first big summer of fun, soon it came to be the winter. So Herbie's mummy and daddy had some very important instructions for him. Oh, come along now, Herbie. It's time to put down your kite, because winter is coming. So now we hedgehogs will hibernate until the spring. Oh, what do you mean? Asked the Herbie, clutching his beloved kite. Can I play with my kite whilst I hibernate? No, Herbie, my precious little prickle. Hibernating means going to bed. You see, we hedgehogs sleep all through winter and then we get up in the spring when it's warm. So, all of the hedgehog family huggled through to their lovely warm nest and curled up in the little prickly balls, ready to sleep right through the cold, frosty winter. Oh, well, nearly all the hedgehogs. Ha ha! No hibernating for Herbie! No! I'm going to get up again and play with my kite! Ha. And that is just what he did. As soon as the Herbie heard the big Daddy Hedgehog's loud winter snores, he got up and snuck outside, running around with his kite, having the great time. Hedgehog kite fun, that's what I'm into. Hoggy number one staying up all winter. Hey! And whilst the other hedgehogs were toasty warm, tucked up in their nest, Young Herbie stayed up, having fun and flying his kite all winter long. Well, when the springtime came, his family began to open their little hedgehog eyes and stretch, ready for the warm weather. Oh, springtime! Fantastic! Let's sing our wakey-up song and run around like all hedgehogs do. Ha! 
but because Sir Herbie had stayed up too long, he was now extremely super tired. And as he tried to run around with his family, he began to doze off, accidentally letting go of his lovely kite, and it floated off up into the sky. Ah. Oh. Well, prickle my potatoes, son. You've really spoilt your summer time, haven't you? Said the mummy hedgehog. Best you go for a little lie down. And so poor Herbie snuggled off to sleep. Oh. And he was so tired that he slept right through the whole summer, missing out on all the big family fun. And all because he didn't just go to sleep at bedtime. And now, Herbie the Hedgehog's kite is here in Dilstonia. Yes, Hedge. So how could you all reuse it? Ooh, let's use it as a whale waver that we can use to wave at the whales from even further away. But then Miss Katie stepped forward, for she had a most spectacular plan. Why don't we use the kite to make Pumpkin's bedtime fort, so we can all snuggle up underneath it and have the perfect nighttime sleep? Oh, Miss Katie, that is a clever plan. And you can still have a lovely time getting ready for bed together, building your snuggle fort. So the Jifflings all dragged the kite into their bedroom and heaved it up on top of some pillows. Then they piled their snuggly blankets underneath. And indeed, it did make a perfect bedtime fort. So they popped on their nightcaps, turned out the light and knew it must be time for bed. Good night, young pumpkin. Good night. Good night, Albert. Way, I'll see you in the morning, like. Good night, Friedeline. Won't it is a good night? Yeah. Good night, Miss Katie. Night, night. Good night, Hedge. Hedge? <sighs> oh, I think the head is asleep already. And goodbye to you, wherever you are. Maybe next time you see a thing that you might throw away, you'll stop and see if you can use it again, just like our friends the Jifflings. And maybe the thing you use again will have a story to tell too. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Bottle Ship. For all the parents listening, if you'd like to, you can donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash bottle ship. And as a thank you, we'll send your child a personalised audio message from the Jifflings. And for all the children listening, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. We've had some lovely reviews this week, haven't we, Jifflings? Ooh, yes, we have. Like this one from America. It says, Hi, I'm Eva and I am five years old. My brother Oscar and I like to listen to the Jifflings. I like to listen to them before I go to bed. We want you to make a story about a dinosaur's bookcase. Oscar and I both like dinosaurs. We like the dinosaur salad tongs because it's about dinosaurs. Hmm. Miss Katie, Young Pumpkin and Albert are our favourite characters. Miss Katie is my favourite because she likes dressing up just like I like to dress up. Other ideas for stories are a digger's bucket and a dinosaur's hat. Keep the stories going and we are looking forward to new episodes on the podcast, especially the bonus episodes. From Eva and Oscar in New York. Well, thank you very much, Eva and Oscar. What a perfect review. Yes. Thank you very much. And we've also had this review too, from Canada. It says, Hello from Northern Ontario. Our names are Audrey and Henry. 
Audrey is 11 and Henry is 8. We love your stories. Audrey's favourite Jiffling is Miss Katie and Henry's favourite is Hedge. We also love listening to Peace Out and Storytime. Our dad found these stories and we love listening to them together when he tucks us in. Thank you for making the very best stories from Audrey and Henry. Well, thank you very much, Audrey and Henry. This is the lovely review. Like, totally, man. And we'd like to say hello to Hoshea and Medita in Germany. And hello to Rhea and Averson too. And a big hello to Tilly and Ruby, who used to live in New Zealand, but now live in France. Ah, oh, thank you so much for getting in touch. We really do love to hear from everybody. Yes, we do. So please remember to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to send us an email, please send it to thejifflings at gmail.com. Also, if you like listening to stories, why not check out our sister podcast, Storytime, for children of all ages. Thanks again, and we'll bring you more exciting adventures with our friends the Jifflings very soon. Goodbye!